senior producer from NFL Films, Greg Cosell, joining us. And Greg's appearance on the show presented by Scott Lawn Yard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Well, Greg, in the break, some developments concerning player availability in this one, Bills and Chiefs. The Chiefs are going to be without four starters. Linebacker Drew Trank Tranquil, safety Brian Cook, left tackle Donovan Smith, and running back Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco, Greg, I don't have to tell you this, but for the sake of this question, he, he has been instrumental in keeping that offense on schedule, knowing how much they have struggled in the passing game to find consistency week to week. How much could his absence mean in trying to keep that offense on the rails? That's a great point, Brownie, because this off the, the passing game has been very up and down. Um, Pacheco has been a real sustaining element for this offense with the way in which he runs. He is your classic sustaining back, the kind of back that when it's blocked for three or four gets seven or eight. He's physical. He's a tempo setter. He's that kind of back. Um, so he's an attitude runner. And, and when pass games are struggling and you really want to line up and try to move the football, you like to have an attitude runner. And he's that kind of back. Um, Edward Hilaire, who I assume will be his replacement, is not that kind of player. What has been the issue with the Chiefs' offense? We're used to seeing them hang 30, you know, in a, in a yeah. half, let alone 33 times in a season. You know, what, what's, what's the difference between Casey's offense this year as opposed to when it was flying high? I think there's a number of factors involved, Steve. Um, and, you know, I can't get into Patrick Mahomes' head. But I will say this. I think, you know, it's funny. Let, let me preface it this way. I spoke to a defensive coordinator, a former D coordinator who played against Mahomes for a number of years. And he volunteered to me. He said, you know, Mahomes is great, but Mahomes will always move when he doesn't have to move. That's just part of who he is and how he plays. And I think that that's even become worsened this year for this reason. Again, without being in his head. But I don't think he's comfortable with the protection from his two offensive tackles. Now, Donovan Smith, you mentioned, is out this week, and we'll get to his replacement in a moment. But Donovan Smith and Jawan Taylor have not played particularly well in one-on-one -on -one pass protection. And my guess is he's very aware and very conscious of that. And so, therefore, even though he's prone to move regardless, even at his best, he's probably even more conscious. He's probably anticipating pressure and then perceiving pressure when it's not there. And he's been moving even more. And the special plays that have come off movement have not been as frequent this year because, as look, as you guys know, those plays do have an improvisation, random element to them. They're not structured plays, so there's no guarantee that they happen. Uh, yeah. I also think, I also think he's not been as sharp just mentally in delivering the football when there are throws to be made. Um, you know, keep in mind for quarterbacks that move a lot, there's a very fine line. You see this with Josh sometimes. There's a very fine line between making second reaction movement plays and playing loose and at times without the discipline that's needed to play the position at a high level. Um, and right now, Mahomes is leaving a few too many throws on the field. Yeah, no yeah. question about it. And, and it's evident. You can see it. It's in their point production. It's in their completion percentage. I mean, run down the list of stats that you want. It's all there for you to chew on. What is ironic is Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes – their two offenses are first and second in sacks allowed per play. So they're not getting they're not getting these guys on the ground. The, the Bills offensive line has been exemplary this year from a pass protection standpoint. You can't say the same for the Chiefs. And meanwhile, Buffalo's defense is number one in sack percentage this year. So it's going to be right. a very interesting thing that we witness here. What can you tell us about the guy who's going to step in at left tackle, the rookie Wanye Morris from Oklahoma? I believe he was a third-round draft choice. Yeah, I mean, few offensive tackle prospects in the 2023 draft looked the part more than Morris. I mean, this guy has prototypical size, Brownie. His arm length is over 35 inches. He's got a wingspan of 85 inches. I mean, his physical Jeez. profile is absolutely off the charts. Keep in mind, he came to the University um, of Tennessee as a big-time five-star recruit. And then he ended up transferring to Oklahoma, where he played two years. Um, so you're dealing with a guy that is really long-limbed. He's powerful. He's flexible. He's got heavy hands. I mean, this is a guy that really looks like he could develop into a really good player. But 
there's a lot of technique issues that he has to work through. He was often very late with his hands in pass protection. He had some balance and body control issues. He didn't always play to the physical and athletic traits that he showed, but those physical and athletic traits were super high level. So he's probably not ready to be a big time player yet, but he certainly could develop into one down the road. And what else can you tell us about uh, you know, trends with this offense? How, has Andy Reid, you know, started to ev- evolve uh, from where they've been in years past as a play caller, and and you know, or is he kind of, I don't know, relegated to the personnel he's been dealt because of you know the departures of Tyreek Hill and others? Yeah, I, you know, that's a very interesting question, Steve. I mean, you know, it gets into that whole issue of how receivers impact the quarterback play, right? Um, you know, and and obviously, you know, when a quarterback does not have receivers who are considered really good, you know, people like to say, well, the receivers are bad. Um, you know, I think that's, I don't want to say it's a cop out. I mean, there's some merit to that, but I think you have to be careful about making it seem as if that's the only reason. Um, you know, you watch the, this offense, and again, I can't speak to how Mahomes feels about his receivers, but there's not many snaps here, Steve, in which Mahomes hits his back foot and delivers the ball within the structure of the play design. You don't see that a whole lot. Um, So now you become overly reliant on secondary action movement plays. And there's no question he can make those plays. And could he make five of them this week and be phenomenal? Sure he can. That can happen any given week. We know that. Um, But that those haven't happened with the frequency. So, you know, one thing that happened, it was two years ago. You guys may recall this. It was two years ago when Mahomes had a little bit of a rough stretch early in the season. And Andy Reid clearly went to a quick rhythm passing game to try to get him back playing with some sense of, of rhythmic timing. And it was effective, and he got back on track. Um, so we'll see if that's something that they, you know, attempt to do. Don't forget this year. I mean, it's really been interesting about the Chiefs, and I'm not sure a lot of people – are aware of this. Um, Mahomes has the second most passing attempts of 10 or less air yards in the NFL this year. They are not throwing the ball even at the intermediate levels, much less down the field. Let's flip it over to that Chiefs defense, which is playing very well and is probably the strength of their team now. Third in the league in points allowed. They're up in the top five in sacks. They play a very physical brand, particularly at the cornerback spots, jamming guys at the line of scrimmage. They like to beat up people's receivers. Um, What is your assessment of their physical style of play and the way Spagnuolo has them executing? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Brownie, because that, to me, is a critical piece. Coach Spags is a big believer in press. He does not want to give in today's NFL with so much quick game, so much timing and rhythm with the ball coming out in, you know, 1.5, two seconds. He does not want to give those quick throws, those easy throws. So he believes that you disrupt by playing press. And and that's his belief. They've been very, very good at it. Um, Obviously, they made a big change this year where McDuffie has moved in and become the slot corner and Sneed stays outside. And McDuffie is a physical, competitive guy. He's very good in the slot. And Sneed is one of the better corners in this league. Um, So, uh, and they're really good up front. I mean, that's where they're really good. They're very uh, deep. They have a lot of good players. And they have players who are multi-positional. So, you know, Jones can line up inside or outside. He's lined up outside more this year than in previous years. Dana, 51, line up inside or outside. Karloftis can line up anywhere. Um, Omenahu can line up anywhere. So they have a ton of positional flexibility and versatility up front. And it's, you know, they're a difficult team to play against. How does the Buffalo Bills offensive line match up they have played extremely well they've played with five guys across the board the same five all through the season um we noticed this last week the bills their guard play has really been upgraded this year from a year ago Um, how does that match up work and look to you particularly since the bills under at least under joe brady have started running the football really well yeah and i think that has to me that's been critical um and to me, the next step in the, in the evolution of this offense is to match the run game and the play action pass game even more. And then I think you really have something. But, you know, I, we've talked for a number of years that they just needed to rely on the run game more and more volume. It can't be Josh Allen all the time. 
Um, you know, and I think they played exceptionally well in their last game against an Eagles defense that has a lot of good players up front. So that to me is where you could argue in this game, the rubber meets the road because this is a difficult defensive front to play against with the Chiefs and the O-line is going to have to be strong, not only strong in pass protection, but strong in the run game. They're going to need to run the ball to some degree. That doesn't mean they need to run for 175 yards or, or have 40 carries. But when they do run, they're going to need to have some success. It's a very difficult defense to play on third and long. Now, that might not sound like a brilliant statement, you know, because no defense, obviously, you don't want to be in third and long anytime. But Spags is a master on third and long with all his late movement, all his disguised looks, and all of his pressures. Um, he is a master at pressure and different kinds of pressure that's difficult to, to uh, account for and pick up. You know, and knowing that the Bills' run game has seen a spike over the last three weeks, averaging 165 yards a game, it's not just that. I mean, Joe Brady has broken some tendencies of late, too, uh, here, Greg, because they're 495 yards the last three games, second most in the league behind only Pittsburgh, and then they've led the league in rushing first downs over that stretch, number one, and then they're third in rushing third down conversions. When it was third and three, or, I mean, this team was throwing the football. They broke yeah. some of those tendencies against Philadelphia two weeks ago and yeah. got conversions. What does that do for an opposing defensive coordinator when they see tendency breakers like that in the previous game before they play an opponent? What is Spags thinking when he sees stuff like that? Well, that changes the way you might go about playing third and, let's say, two to four because you know one thing that we've seen and this has been a little league wide brownie one thing i've noticed watching tape is it used to be if it was let's say third and, and four or less and and steve can certainly uh, you know know this um is that it was almost a, almost 100 percent man coverage you know we we'd immediately say oh, that's a man down but you know defenses have started to play a lot more zone in in, in third and shorter yardage situations um and it'll be interesting to see if that's what, you know, Spags may do. Because basically on third down, you get you get four coverages from the Chiefs on third down. You get cover two, you get two man, you get cover one and cover one robber. Now, those are all situational depending on the down and distance, the field location. But you're going to get one of those four coverages on third down. Now, he may change the way he wants to play that, given what you just said, Brownie. And and by the way, I love the fact that they're doing that. Because, again, you know how I feel. I love Josh Allen, but you it can't be him. You can't rely on him, although he was pretty damn good against the Eagles. Uh, <laughs> but you can't just rely on him for everything. Yeah, and <laughs> you're right. Um, if you get this, – this game does come down to it. And I want to ask you, and now I've got – it used to be a, da a, a, da a man down because you wanted an extra guy to be able to go into the box to stop the run game on a third yeah. and two when they actually get it. Now teams are so good at stopping the run and so disciplined that they feel more comfortable being able to drop a guy out and, and cover up a quick throw. I, what is the trend, do you think, now? Is it still – where's the line of demarcation, I guess, is my next yeah, question. Yeah, I think, I think you're seeing – you know, I think the reason a lot of teams didn't play, you know, zone on third and short is because there's always a void and they just didn't want to give up, you know, a quick 40 yard throw into a void in a zone. Um, right. Now, obviously, when you play against the, jo the Josh Allens of the world, you also have to be careful about playing man because unless you're going to spy or unless you're going to do other things that go along with playing man because, you know, you play man and, and start having everybody turn their back with receivers, you run receivers off and he runs. And he gets a first down. I mean, look how well he ran the ball against the Eagles. Um, you know, and he's obviously a master at that. That's his deal. He's really, really good. Maybe the best in the league at it. Um, so, you, you know, it's hard to say what Spags might do in those situations. But I, just to make the larger point that Brownie was making, I think it's a really good thing that the offense has become less predictable on third down in those kinds of situations. There's more to have to deal with for a defensive coordinator. Uh, we know that Tranquil is out for this game, and yeah, Cochran, Cochran had to step in for him last week, a far more inexperienced player than Nick Bolton, who has a chance to come off of IR and step right back into the lineup at, at middle linebacker. 
my question for you is how limited might Spagnolo be with play calling if Bolton can't play either and he has to rely on the younger player Cochran to be his communicator out there on the field? I mean, it's a home game. Communication shouldn't be an issue. You know, all of that. Well, maybe it will be, actually, because the crowd will be noisy. Um, but anyway, I, I guess what I'm asking is if Cochran has to play, does it limit Spagnolo in the calls at all, counting on him to read it? That's very possible. Um, the other thing I'd add to that is Brian Cook. Okay, he's out as well, correct? Yes. Yes. They are a heavy dime team. They play almost 30% of their defensive snaps in dime, six defensive backs. And the dime has been Reed, Cook, and Edwards. Okay? Now, with Cook out, um, they have Connor. Connor's been playing sort of in their big nickel, but Connor could, if they want to continue to play dime, and stay with what they've done, not just this year, but even in previous years under Spags, then you could see Connor as the third safety in dime. But I, he hasn't played in that role. So now you're going, you know, you're reaching into the depth chart and you're putting someone in a, in a position that they've not been asked to play this year. So, or they stay nickel, in which case they're going to do things on third down that they also haven't done much of this year. So I'm, um, um, you know, we don't know the answer to those questions because we're not in their meeting rooms, but it's going to be different for them. And who is and who right. is the dime linebacker typically? Is it Chanel or is it is it well, somebody? The dime else? linebacker was tranquil. Oh boy. Well, yeah. So I'm one I'm wondering who that's gonna be now too. Because the dime linebacker was Bolton and then it was tranquil. So yeah. you know, uh my my guess is my guess is it'll be Willie Gay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they got some juggling to do on that back end there. I, that's yeah. why I'm kind of intrigued yeah. by it. Uh, there is a so chance, there is a chance, Greg, that Dawson Knox comes off IR and returns to the lineup this week. Obviously, that would afford Joe Brady the opportunity to diversify the offense even further. Uh, as he comes off wrist surgery, practiced all week, he is listed as questionable. But Coach McDermott said he has a good chance of being well, activated for Sunday. What kind of changes could Joe Brady you know, implement with him back in the in the fray. Well, here's what I'd love to see. Let, let's remember that that Josh Allen's had great success against the Chiefs defense for the majority of his career, and some of that success, uh, you know, I even went back and looked at last year's game, and they had some success out of base personnel on first down. That might be a good way to attack this defense. Get them in base. You know, maybe Cochran's on the field. You get the three linebackers. You get Chanel, who's more of a box linebacker, and he was a pass rusher at Wisconsin. So he's not really an athletic linebacker outside the right. box area. Maybe you get them in their base, you line up in 12 personnel, you throw the ball on first down. You know, that might be an opportunity, you know, to, to have some uh, explosive plays. I remember last year they hit digs for over 30 yards on a first down, and I believe they had Gilliam in the game at the time. But, I mean, you can certainly do that with 12 personnel. Good stuff. Thanks, Greg. Greg, thanks as always. Appreciate the time. We'll catch up with you next week, and we'll look for you on the matchup show. Are, are Bills Chiefs a part of a specific segment or no? Uh, they are indeed. They are in the show. Hey, it's one of the big games. Uh, one, one might say that this is kind of an important game for the Bills, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Just a little uh, bit. <laughs> yeah, it could be construed as important, yes. <laughs> All right, thanks, Greg. We'll catch right, up with you next All right, week. guys, appreciate it. Thanks.